Hello, I'm Tom Zuber. I'm the managing partner of Zuber Lawler. We represent clients throughout the world, from offices in California, Illinois, and New York. I personally work on intellectual property litigation, deals, and global portfolio management. The other 40 attorneys at my firm also have experience with mergers and acquisitions, initial public offerings, and FDA matters. Our attorneys work around the world in languages covering 90% of the world's population. Today, I'll speak about IPOs in the cannabis space and the obstacles they may present. I am a lawyer, but I'm not rendering legal advice in this video, and I'm certainly not offering any advice as to the usage or sale of cannabis. There are a number of reasons that a company, whether in the cannabis industry or any other industry, might decide to go public. Often they relate to a need for liquidity for expansion or for acquisitions. Going public presents challenges for companies in the U.S. cannabis industry as opposed to other industries, given that cannabis is, well, illegal here in the United States, at least at the federal level. Nevertheless, in recent years, companies like Tilray, Canopy Growth, Aurora Cannabis, and MedMen have gone public on major stock exchanges, such as the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, the Toronto Stock Exchange, and the Canadian Securities Exchange. Additional liquidity has allowed these companies to accelerate expansion during these critical formative years of the legalized cannabis market. If you're considering taking your cannabis company public, this video is for you. A decision to take your cannabis company public turns on a number of factors. In this video, we'll look at some of the most important factors, which stock exchange might be best for you, and some of the alternatives to going public that might accomplish your goals. First, the rules for going public vary considerably from stock exchange to stock exchange, so you may be limited as to which stock exchanges are available to your cannabis company. In the U.S., cannabis remains a Schedule I substance under the Federal Controlled Substances Act. Under U.S. securities laws, companies that are in violation of the laws of their home country are prohibited from listing on U.S. stock exchanges, such as the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. However, while a U.S.-based cannabis company that touches the cannabis plant here in the U.S. is precluded from listing on these U.S. exchanges, somewhat ironically, a plant-touching cannabis company based in a country where cannabis is legal, such as Canada, is not. Canadian stock exchanges, with the notable exception of the Toronto Stock Exchange, have welcomed cannabis companies, including those that touch the plant, to be listed on their exchanges. The Toronto Stock Exchange has taken an approach similar to that of the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, in that it doesn't allow a company that is in violation of the federal laws of their home country to list. So, a U.S.-based cannabis company that touches the plant here in the U.S. cannot list on the Toronto Stock Exchange, because cannabis, of course, is still illegal at the federal level here in the U.S. On the other hand, a cannabis company that doesn't touch the plant here in the U.S. or any other country in which cannabis remains a prohibited substance can list on the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, or the Toronto Stock Exchange. Companies that do touch the plant here in the U.S can choose from other exchanges, like the Canadian Securities Exchange. Furthermore, creative corporate restructuring might allow a separation of various assets that do touch the plant in the U.S. from assets that do not touch the plant here in the U.S. In efforts to speed time to listing, some cannabis companies have looked to shell companies, corporate redomiciling, and reverse takeovers. Each vehicle presents its own rewards and risks and its own inefficiencies and complications. So where does all this leave a plant-touching cannabis company seeking access to the capital of public markets? While access to capital for cannabis companies is currently more complicated than it is for companies in other industries, with careful planning and preparation, it can be done and done well. With cannabis companies currently enjoying extremely high price-to-earnings ratios on stock exchanges, the appetite of investors for cannabis stocks appears strong. On the other hand, we're likely experiencing a bubble, much like the first internet bubble. The question of whether or not to go public and where depends in part on where your cannabis company is situated and where it touches the plant. Other factors can include the amount of your company's EBITDA, projected growth, the state of its books, its short and long-term need for capital, the liquidity and prestige that comes with being a publicly traded company, attracting talent as a function of such liquidity and prestige, and the cost and requirements associated with being a publicly traded company. All of these factors are colored by the increasing support in the U.S. for ending prohibition relating to cannabis. This, in turn, would open up the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ to cannabis companies. So another question to ask amid all of this is, do I wait for U.S. prohibition to end? But that's a topic for another day. That's all I have for today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about cannabis IPOs, M&A, intellectual property, or FDA matters, please feel free to reach out. Thank you for your time.